Hi guys, welcome to Grudy's Race and Rest Day, welcome to Life Chat. Uh, thought I'd... I haven't done one for a little while, so I thought I'd, I'd do a Life Chat on manifestation and resetting the mind as to what you want versus how you've got to think. So anyone that's been watching since, you know, I think I've been going for 18 months now, nearly two years. So anyone watching from the start would remember all the, the downs and the the roller coaster ride of emotion, which is attached to somebody with ADHD. So I do believe that I'm transitioning out of having an attention deficit issue. Um, not the attention side, more the hyper emotional side. And that comes down to putting some sort of structure into my life. So this is why every morning I walk now, I'm losing weight, gaining, gaining fitness, the dog looks amazing. She, she's looking really good. Um, so I'm not going to walk marathons and stuff like that. I'm not going to start running and going to the gym. I don't even think I'm going to the, go to the gym. I did think about it. But our mental clarity is what we should be working on. We should all be working on being mentally as fit as possible. You know, I ran myself down into the ground. Hold on, I need these. <laughs> See that? You, you got to work out what you need when you need them because I've got to go do some work. So I've been cooking today. I have a curry sausages on the slow cook and I've used, did something a little different. I'm using Italian style sausages. They're a little overbearing in flavor. So I've added a bunch of honey and extra corn and stuff like that. And it's actually pretty good, but it's, it's a little punchy, so even better. So back to the mental state and the mental clarity and, and why you've got to be careful what you manifest and how to manifest certain things in life. So Saturday last week, I had some gentlemen roll up. We were talking motorbikes. I had a couple of two-stroke old-school road bikes. I should take a video of them. They're beautiful bikes. Next time I see the lads, I'll, I'll take a video. We were chatting about my bike and how the seat's so small, I could only have like a 45-kilo girl on the back and one looks and says like a 45-kilo like a Asian girl. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, just, just a little woman. Otherwise, she'll have to have her own bike or I'll have to change the seat. doesn't bother me. And then I said, uh, I said, well, I couldn't realistically have a six-foot Amazonian, you know, hanging off the back because it's only a little bike and the seat's tiny. And I envisioned six foot, redhead, long legs, you know, and, and I looked at, at the lads and I said to them, I said, oh, you know, the kind that would throw me on the bed and have a way with me kind of thing, you know, ravish me. And I envisioned this six foot, long legged, redhead, gorgeous chick. So lads left. Uh, and this was something that I ingrained in my head, just split second. So this is why I'm saying be very careful what you manifest. So less than one hour later, so it started to spit, rained on Saturday, last Saturday, so it started to spit. Less than one hour, a little white car drove around the corner of my shed. This girl had been in one of the other sheds, purchasing whatever whatever she was doing she was shopping she was turning around so it's a bit of a shit to turn around here so I was giving her some instructions and I've looked and I've gone that's a good looking ginger and she's she'd be a couple of years older than me so I think she's late 40s uh, a good looking woman so she ended up getting out of the car anyway so the long and short of it is she got out of the car we ended up chatting for about an hour she was six foot tall long legs, ginger, and good looking. And I was blown away. <laughs> she was soulful. She was conspiracy theorist. She was a lot of a lot of what I looked for. And there was massive chemical there too. There was massive chemical, uh, not just on my part, on hers as well. We parted ways. I gave her a plant. She left, and I may never see her again. That's fine. If I do, we'll chat and we'll become friends. I've done my calculation of whether or not there would be any any kind of 
you know I've, I, I look into the compatibility side of stuff and yes there's about a 40 45 percent compatibility rate there I'll run into all the compatibility shit later on um, so for me what it was was I had to sit back and go why why did this gorgeous redhead roll into hold on I'm just trying to fix this so it's a bit better roll into my driveway because I envisioned it and there was one close and it just happened. This is the world we live. Um, you can envision anything you want, but if you, um, if you don't envision it with the right frequency, the right vibration, it's never come. So most people turn around and say, oh, I stubbed my thumb. It's going to be a bad day. You're going to have a bad day. <laughs> That's how it works. So when you're out and about in your day-to-day, -day, what you need to realise is the way you think and the way you portray what you put out goes everywhere around you. So you walk past someone and they say, how's your day? And you oh, it hasn't been a very good one. You're passing that hasn't been a very good one frequency vibration on and you'll resonate it all day and shit will come to you. You know, um, you're in a hurry to get to work and you get every red light. That's because you're in a hurry to get to work and your frequency, your vibration is making that happen. Whereas when you're just, I, I do this blase drive stuff where I'll just be like, I'm just, just laid back. I get every green light. I don't try. It just happens. So, yeah. Yeah, the, be careful what you manifest because you could actually end up with what you don't want but your fantasy tells you you do. So the girl that actually came here, it was very, very important that nothing happened. I'm I'm on a clear karma path at the moment where I've cleared all my my ancestral blocks so i'm now on a position of life where of in this realm anyway of where i can make a lot of really cool shit happen now every time i've i've been in a position you know after a breakup work on myself get to an amazing place in in my world what usually happens is a woman will come along and she won't be exactly right but i'll see potential in that union and I will I will make something happen we'll get together I'll put me on hold again so this time I'm not putting me on hold I've got some really really big goals to kick I'm 45 years old Bezos was he made his first million when he was in his 40s I'm pretty sure all right. These are the these are the things we're going to realize it's never too late it's never too late to actually have a beautiful life so most people would have been like, oh, you didn't. You know, most of my mates, you know, oh, you didn't, you didn't. You didn't get a number, you, you know, you didn't. You didn't dick her. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Um, there was every opportunity to maybe take it to the next level. Yeah, definitely. There was, it was, it was very, very intense. And I could read all of what was happening. I even looked up to the heavens and went, uh, thank you. <laughs> because it's what I needed was I needed a something spicy to come out of nowhere. And it, and it did. And I envisioned it and it happened within less than an hour. Guys, less than one hour. And it was because of the energy I put into the thought. I envisioned it and I didn't just envision it, I really envisioned it because I have been single for what, four months? Mm, been non, I've been non-sexually active for more than three years. So I had a relationship but there wasn't there wasn't any intimacy in it. That that was gone. That's why it all ended. So it was it was really intense on Saturday. 
So then the whole week has just been really, really strange and weird. Um, meet people, give information, talk about stuff, help people, and still this is life. This is what we've got to do. We need to, when you meet somebody, so I met a blind guy the other day or semi-blind uh, on the Sunday and I met a lovely lady named Anne. And Anne and I talked about her husband and we talked about some numerology stuff and we talked about who her husband was and I rattled off exactly who he was and she looked at me a little bit strange and went, wow, you're actually on the, on the, on the knocker here. So I'm studying at the moment. I'm studying numerology. And we're all kind of predetermined who we are and who we should be with. And there is a way to work this out. So I gave her some information. We had a great chat. And whilst I was sitting at the uh, laundromat, a gentleman walked in with his walking stick and his cane. I'm born in 1979, so I'm 45. He's born in 1978, and he looked like he was 55. Um, looked like he had been fit but he'd been hit really, really hard, uh, sepsis, and his body's shut, shutting down, you know, and he'd lost a bit of his eyesight and he'd lost his partner. He'd lost his missus of 15 years. She couldn't stick around whilst he was in such a damaged position. She walked. Now, he was bitter, and I could tell he was bitter, so we were chatting, and I said, so you still look up, don't you? I said, you still you still see the, the light at the end of the tunnel? And he goes, oh, well, I'm blind. But he said, there's not much I can do. He said, look, I can still see the outline of the sunset. So that he goes, I'm happy with that. So he was just checking out the contraband. He was just kicking around. Um, I said to him about karma, and I said about life and, you know, the things because Anne and I were talking about karma and how we pay for our ancestral debts. So our previous lives and what we've done in them, we will impact our later lives with karmic debt. So my karmic debt's done. Now, if I had have slept this girl the other day and she was not right and I'd done it for the wrong reasons, I would have started racking up more karmic debt towards my soul, towards my energy. Right? So I'm very, very careful what I do now, and I think we should all be very careful. We're not supposed to sleep with people if we're not actually compatible with them. Now, if you're sleeping with the wrong people, you're sharing negative energies. So if you're sleeping with somebody that's an enemy sign in numerology, oh, you're, you're doing yourself more harm than good. You're better off just leaving your parts in your, in your pants. Now, old mate actually did say, I said to him, I said, you know, like we're talking about karma. And there was a, it was a three-way conversation at the laundromat because <laughs> this is where you, you have the wildest conversations is out in the public, not on the internet. Right, so he actually did say that he believes this is payment for things he'd done. So he, he he's on his way to accepting and understanding why he's in the position he's in. Now, he was still bitter at her. Now, the position I'm in now, I have no hatred or no bitterness for any of my exes. I have nothing but love. There's a part in my heart for every single one of them. They were an amazing part of my life. They taught me. They they shared life with me. Even if it was like I've had a couple of short interactions, we'll call them. Right, even a short interaction, I still have a slice of energy that's that's theirs. It belongs to them. Um. I'm still a part of their energy and they don't get it. I don't complain. You be very, very careful who you're letting your bet. You be very, very careful. The things... Oh, oh, pardon me. Sorry. Got any sausages. So you be very, very careful. I had to do that. <laughs> and if the one person that understands that one is watching, always love you. There will always be a part in my heart for you. It's just our time is done. Right. 
So here's, here's the thing, guys. We're not told, but every little thing we do negatively actually impacts our future lives. We all have a purpose for being here. There is, we're not just here randomly. There's a purpose. And I'll, sh- I'll be able to teach you all about this soon, probably about 12 months, all right? I'm in the middle of working on a lot of stuff at the moment. I, I work on lots of different things. I have 10 engines on the go. The silver car's nearly got its engine going back in. I'll have videos on that hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Um, but, yeah, when it all comes down to our lives and our karmetic side of our lives and manifestations. Now, most of the lonely people out there are trying to manifest somebody to save them from their sorrow, from sorrow. Your whole energy that you are putting out is sorrow. You are not going to find love and intimacy and passion and all of the best things in life that we are actually all after. Whether or not we want to admit it, we're all after somebody that's going to love us for everything of us. So if you're in this position where you are searching from sorrow, stop searching. Stop searching totally. You now need to Look inside, fall in love with the human that you are. With that human entity that you are, fall in love. Because if you can love yourself unconditionally, see this? I have massive eyebrows. I love my massive eyebrows. I, the human that I am is amazing. The human you are is amazing. We're all amazing. We're all so unique. You don't need to pretend to be something you're not. Just be you. And when you love who you are, then you can manifest the amazing life that you can envision because you'll be able to envision it from a position of love, from a position of happiness because no one out there will ever make you happy if you are not happy with you. Okay, guys. It's long enough. I'll chuck this up. I'm cooking curry sausages. I bought another brisket, and that's marinating in sweet plum sauce. (laughs) And I bought some pork belly. And I had to cook this morning because my hands were semi-clean. So I've, I've got to prep before I go out and get dirty. So kitchen bench is all clean. All clean over behind me, see that? I cleaned all that shit up so that I could uh, cook a beautiful meal. So, yeah, this is where it's at, guys. Find things that make you happy. Find how to make you happy before you can ever make anyone else happy. Because it's not going to end well if you're looking for happiness in others. Look for your happiness in you. And love who you are. And if you don't, change it. If you don't like the person you are, if you're, you know, narcissistic, if you're whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever your traits are, if you don't like them, change it. Be a good person. Share good vibes. Say hello to people. Tell people that they look good without being creepy. This is the hardest part. I I like to pay compliments to people, especially when you see somebody doing something, um, somebody exercising that's a little overweight. You're like, you look good. You're doing well. That's what I'm doing too. You know, you need to be able to chat to people and just, just share good I'll probably, I don't know, 
probably be a week before I do another one. I might go do one from up on the hill, another live chat. Um, I got lots of stuff to talk about, lots of little little tips to give to people in lots of different ways. Channel through Creator Source Energy. Thank you. You have a lovely day and uh, see you next time.